Remember those behind the scenes videos of movie characters where actors had to use green screens, body suits with motion trackers, and all sorts of gear to create the CGI monsters they played on screen? Imagine if you could do all of that with just your phone. This is something that Meshka Paid, a small software company based in Germany, is working on. It creates foundation models that enable digital humans to see, understand, and move. We interviewed Noreen Mahmoud, Meshka Paid's CEO and one of its founders, about the vision behind the company. All of this, like being able to present, uh, represent humans realistically, that's where that whole ideology comes from. Because if a computer, if you can teach computers uh, what real people look like, what they're doing, then they can also, you know, be trained to eventually do human-like tasks, uh, like folding clothes and such, but also be able to interact with people. Because eventually, if you want a computer to be able to understand, for example, if I'm playing a guitar and I want to teach a computer character how to play the guitar, they need to have an understanding about where my fingers are, where my hands are, how what a guitar is. Uh, and why I like why I hold it the way I hold it. And then the inverse of that is even true. If you want to have a computer model teach get the guitar to some kids or teach some kids to to write even, it needs to understand all about that human, how that person should be holding the pen, how or the or the guitar, and you know, all of these things are are necessary. So yeah, that's what I, I want. <laughs> mm. Meshka Paid is already well on its way to developing these humans. In a video posted on its social media, an employee uses the company tech to teach an avatar to mimic his movements and converts them into cooler characters, moving against a more vibrant cityscape. So our reporters decided to test the technology for themselves. Not bad for a first attempt, but we wanted to see if we could make this more precise, so we tried again. This time, we were really excited by the results we got. The interface also allows us to change our avatar's weight and height, among other features. The most interesting thing for me during that research already was, um, we were building our computer models for our own solution so that we could help computers understand humans. But we started getting, while we were building these models, we started getting requests from other departments. Like there were there was a biomechanics department that was learning how to identify motion mobility issues in people by looking at them how at how they walk. And they started approaching us, you know, can you help us with your computer model of, of humans to understand gait? analysis so that we can see if somebody's having knee problems. Same happened for like there was another group doing perception studies about how people look at themselves, especially people with, you know, with weight issues like anorexia and um, bulimia, you know, who have this disconnect between what they see in the mirror about themselves and what they believe, what they're like, what they're actually are, look like. Uh, they always assume that they are, you know, much fatter for example, and then this is this is a mental dis like you know disassociation that they they start creating, and this is to some level also you know ex you know made made worse by social media and whatnot. All of these kinds of groups started approaching us, saying, "Hey, what you're what you're building is useful for us too," and this made us you know more and more sort of uh, passionate about what we were building and making it usable for all of these different kinds of use cases. And so, Mahmoud formed Meshkapade with partners Michael Black, who now serves as chief scientist, and Talha Zaman, now the chief technology officer. Using these models, based on templates of real people, the company is forming the building blocks that will allow computers to understand people and then to be like them. This begs the question, what makes us human? Is it our self-awareness, our ability to empathize, or perhaps it's our complex language? We convey abstract ideas, share detailed stories, and communicate emotions with precision. Our creativity fuels our innovation. 
From art and music to literature and technology, we constantly push the boundaries of what's possible. Our sense of morality and ethical reasoning shapes our actions. We build complex cultures and societies. Traditions, customs and institutions define and organize our lives. Curiosity drives us to explore and seek understanding. Our use of tools is unparalleled. We create and manipulate sophisticated instruments, shaping our environment in profound ways. We pass our knowledge down to future generations, and we act of our own free will. And so, what makes us human is a tapestry of interconnected traits and abilities. So will we be able to teach these generated humans, placed inside video game environments or as chatbots, traits like empathy, to understand and appreciate the world? Mahmoud believes we will. Of sort of this evolution of how we will interact with computers. So this is all going to get better and better. And uh, AI is, you know, is at the center of this because the, these AI methods are creating new kinds of, there's, there's sort of like these, these, they're called neural networks. Uh, they can be trained for language. They can be trained for different kinds of uh, information in the world. Uh, to combine all of those different kinds of information uh, and reason about that information, just like the human brain works. You know, the, when we are looking at the world, we're not just looking at the world, we're also, also um, uh, hearing, we're also sensing, you know, we can feel, feel, we can smell. So we're using all of our senses. The computers don't have all of those senses yet, but it's it's learning to understand more and more from vision and hearing right now. It will potentially also keep on growing to understand more and more uh, about language, about how we are interacting. And it will just keep, keep on getting better because of, because of these kinds of training methods. Mahmoud believes these digital humans will also have an understanding of human intentions. However, with these advancements come growing concerns about user privacy. AI's ability to process vast amounts of data and make decisions raises critical questions about data security, consent, and the potential for misuse. You should, you just need to be able to ask the user and they will tell you um, how to use their data or how not to use their data. And that's, that's just a maximum of fairness that, that has to be there for all kinds of training for AI. It's the law, <laughs> we have to. So that's one of the most important things. That's also why we wanted to stay in Europe because Europe has very strict um, GDPR laws and laws about people, people's data and how it is used by companies. <laughs> in fact, when I, you know, sometimes when I uh, am at different conferences and people come at, come, you know, they don't know about where we are and like where our company is and they'll ask about, okay, so what, how does the ethical factors, you know, um, ethical issues factor in? I just tell, I, if I start saying, oh, but, well, we're based in Germany, they're like, oh, okay, then that's fine. <laughs> just because Germany is very strict about how people's data is used and people's right to say no to use of their data even after even afterwards like if we are training on somebody's data uh later on if they say oh i don't want my data to be used anymore so we have to get rid of it we have to delete it and we have to inform them or you know return their data to them other ai platforms have recently come under fire for using data without consent a notable example being the controversy involving hollywood actress scarlett johansson after OpenAI released a virtual assistant featuring a voice that sounded eerily similar to Johansson's, her legal team demanded that the company disclose how they developed the voice. The company initially denied these allegations before deleting the voice altogether. Mahmoud believes that if the legal backdrop against which platforms like Meshka Paid operate provide airtight safeguards for consumers, the thought of similar platforms cropping up will not be a scary one. This is important because this technology will have far-reaching impacts in areas such as virtual reality, fashion, and even healthcare. So there were some people um, in, uh, in, in African countries and, uh, you know, some different like Southeast Asian regions who had reached out to us about 
okay, we want to create a 3D representation of the people that come in because we want to be able to understand how the body changes between the different patients that are coming in. Sometimes it's about to be able to study pain management. Sometimes it's to be able to study uh, muscle, like motor uh, mobility issues. So what they do is they just use the sliders to create the body shape. And they're very happy with that because that that helps give them a, an a bit initial body shape for that person that, that they can see on the screen and they can then identify, okay, this is the, they can talk to the person and they're like, okay, identify, okay, this is the areas where it's hurting or like how it hurts. And then they have a documented, uh, a 3D documentation of how the progression of this person's healing has gone uh, or or not, not progressed. Uh, another way is, so there are these companies that have uh, crea started creating these automated clinics. So they have, uh, there's this one company that has these automated clinics that's uh, where people can just walk in and they, they don't have to wait for a doctor. They can just go stand in front of a camera and, you know, they can, uh, it also has, there's a weight scale and they can just hold this, this rod which measures their blood pulse. Uh, at the same time, the camera takes a picture uh, or a scan of them uh, and that scan, they're, they're using our platform to convert that scan or th that image into a 3D uh, representation. The fact that these clinics are based in places like Africa, often mistakenly perceived as technologically less advanced by people in the first world, may hold special importance for Mahmoud. She comes from the city of Gujranwala, a teeming metropolis in the heart of Punjab, Pakistan. This is why representation matters to her. Mahmoud's journey highlights how seeing diverse leaders in positions of power can inspire others to pursue their own ambitions. I think one of the things that I've especially seen with my journey, because I was never planning to be a CEO, I was never planning to start a company of my own because I never even imagined it. And the reason why I never imagined it, because I didn't really know any other women in my family, in my, you know, surroundings in the world in general that had started companies. So when I was about to start the company, so my co-founders, they were, they supported me. And of course, among the co-founders, it was clear that I had to be the CEO because I'm the most organized. <laughs> but it was because they said, hey, look, when um, uh, Bill Gates started Microsoft, he didn't know how to start Microsoft. You can probably do just the same way as he did. Or, you know, when Mark Zuckerberg started uh, Facebook, he didn't know what he was doing. You know, you'll find people who will support you. And that was sort of like, yeah, that makes sense. I never even thought about that. And now when I meet other women or younger girls, they are just, it blows their mind that I am the CEO. Because also I am a woman. First of all, they don't hear about that many women CEOs. But then also because I'm from Pakistan, it's like, what? And then also I wear a scarf. You know, it's like so many levels of surprise. And then when you, once that message sinks in, then at, it also empowers other women, other girls, you know, especially girls who are growing up, representation really matters. So for everybody, uh, my message is don't be worried and don't be afraid of doing something big just because you haven't seen anybody else like you do it. Just do it. <laughs>